Welcome to Paul Allison's video cast, podcast, whatever it is. It's October, let's see, October 7th, 2006, on Saturday. And I'm running over here where I ran just recently um, in Jersey. Above the George Washington Bridge. I have a few things on my mind, a few things I want to talk about. And uh, the themes end up coming down to something like accountability, um, design, and rollout. If I can use those themes, accountability, design, and rollout. So that's what is uh, animating my thinking this weekend, this long weekend, this Columbus Day weekend. Ah, leaves are just starting to to change over here along the Palisades. Uh, little spots of yellow here and there. This uh, this route becomes a, a lovely, lovely route um, through the fall and even into the winter. I remember this winter running on this road and uh, hearing the crunch of snow beneath my feet. Now, of course, the three themes that I've laid out, accountability, design, and rollout, um, can't really be separated, now can they? The first is about um, what students are actually doing and giving them the credit for what they're doing. Um, and what they're doing is based on what I've designed for them. And also, what the students are doing is, uh, well, I can only hold them accountable for what we've introduced, what we've wrote out, what we've taught them how to do. So, what can I do to uh, make accountability more possible um, in what I've designed? Now, I can be very specific about that question. You know, I need to figure out how I can see really easily, and of course other teachers want this immediately too, how we can see easily what the students have been doing. So that's one question I want to ask. Um, that may take some redesign of the site, and I want to set up um, communities for each of my classes. I haven't done that yet. So that's some design that I need to work on. And there may be some other things I can design around that. Now I'm kind of realizing that uh, I'll start off in a very abstract way. Now let me get concrete. Because what I'm talking about here is as concrete as anything. <laughs> it's uh, mundane almost. And I almost avoided talking about it. But, uh, because what I really need to do is set up a spreadsheet and start checking things off um, when I see what students have accomplished. I can go pretty quickly through the ELG by, uh, and check their profiles by simply replacing the URL at the top with their usernames. Um, so yeah, that, that's not a problem. The, uh, and the boring part is checking off what they've accomplished. You know, do they have a uh, three to five paragraph essay describing themselves in the Who Am I section? Do they have a, uh, a uh, 51 uh, likes, 50 dislikes? Do they have 20 um, interests that they can develop inquiries around? Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the accountability part. And 
once I have that accountability part in place, I can then use the design that I've created in my class and say, you know, when they walk in the room, well, this is what you've accomplished, this is what you need to work on. So that's uh, what I want to do this weekend, is uh, that mundane checking off stuff in, a, in a, such a way that will allow me to evaluate um, really how committed and how hard working the students have been in the uh, blocking uh, work that we've set out for them to do. You know, accountability is going to be big on the students' agenda coming this next couple of weeks. Yeah, and so, you know, really there are only two weeks left, and one of them is another short week coming up um, before the end of the marking period, which then becomes a parent uh, student teacher conference. And, uh, yeah, this first cycle has been all about getting set up for me. Um, so, yeah, let me build in some self-assessment too. I've created a, a nice tool, I think. There's a uh, community blog called, uh, well, at, with the URL of assessment. It's called How Am I Doing? And, um, I think uh, I need to really give students an opportunity to do some careful self-assessment on that blog over the next, well not next week really, but the week after that, at the end of the first marking period. That would make some sense. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the grid that I'm using to have them do the self-assessment um, and to put out clearly what the design of the course is for them. I need some work. Um, so that's something else I'll be working on this weekend. Here's some clarity. Uh, you know, I think it needs some focus on um, profile, perhaps. I have to think about that. I'm not sure I want the profile to be part of this grid. This grid is really about blogging. <laughs> but it's not either. It's about it is about the bigger issue. So I need to work on integrating um, sorry, ELG tools and uh, the profile is one of those into um, the evaluation of the assessment. I don't know if this uh, video cast is making any sense to anybody. It really does represent my first, first thoughts about what needs to be accomplished. Animal light somewhere up there. So I guess that moves me to thinking about design. If you saw the video right before this one. It was in my classroom and um, my ninth graders in particular have really taken to this uh, blogging <laughs> tic-tac-toe really what it, it, it amounts to be um, grid that uh, encourages them to find their own way in the blogging process. It gives them lots of ways to to start in different um, places. So I'm impressed so far with uh, how that has taken off and I just want to tweak that design a little bit. The bigger design work that I need to do um, has to do with setting up communities for each of my classes and then within each of those communities making a link um, to each of the um, each of the students' profile pages. So the way I've set up my 10th grade advisory, Paul advisory, is uh, to have a, a page that I'm imagining eventually will have 
a list of ways to subscribe to um, the podcast from this class. Uh, but um, that's a kind of future thinking. Right now what's there is a link to each of the students' uh, profile pages, which of course then links them to the each of the students' blog. Um, and then I've collected the art. So yeah, that's what I want to set up for each of my classes. Um, just get those basics set up and then think about how to use those pages to promote um, promote the students' work. Um, so, you know, I can link to those pages and have put those links on the school homepage, for example, or something like that. So, um, that's some of the design work I need to do, both redesigning the, the grid and uh, designing communities for students to uh, to both find each other and for me be, to be able to find them. Now I'm realizing that that design probably makes sense to do first and then <laughs> the accountability will be easier to do. The rollout is simple to think about here. Um, what I want to roll out is uh, Google Reader, um, using Google Reader for reading blogs and eventually for uh, reading news items as well. So I have that on the grid already and that's something the students can't really mark off as having done yet because <laughs> we haven't talked about how to do it. So. Uh, yeah, that's uh, next week's kind of final setup that I want to do. It'd be great if I could introduce some news blogs to them, but um, I've collected together what I call conscious blogs, uh, blogs that have political sort of guts and meaning and um, point of view to them. And uh, and I want to have them subscribe to the OPML file for that. That's a pretty simple thing to do. But then to search within that folder and to organize their folders. So there is some Google Reader work to do. I um, also want them to easily subscribe to the news collection that's right there in Google Reader. I think that would be a good thing for everybody to do as well. So I have some variations and some ways to use Google Reader, both to listen to podcasts and to uh, to read blogs and and to respond to them. Now, a big piece of this that I'm realizing as I talk about, though, is uh, citing sources and uh, um, teaching them just the basics of that. I've done a pretty good job of of citing image sources. But I want to make you know, just this uh, this whole notion of linking to what you um, are talking about is uh, is an important thing. And Flock makes it really really easy. Um, so grabbing a quote from a blog and putting it down on the clipboard and then pulling that quote up onto a uh, a Rightly document feels like a, a pretty nice thing to show kids how to do. And uh, so, so yeah, that's some of the rollout work that we need to do this week. And then I need to plan kind of carefully. So I think I'll end this. Um, sorry if it's been very early draft thinking. <laughs> um, these are the kinds of pre-planning thoughts that I do on a Saturday afternoon when I have a long weekend to get some of this work done. Um, this has been Paul Allison and you can reach me at Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N P-R at gmail.com and uh, please listen to our 
webcast on Wednesday evenings at 9 p.m. and uh, find our podcast from these at uh, Teachers Teaching Teachers dot org. Um, you can listen t- to the webcast at edtechtalk.com. Uh, please look for us. If your students are ready to blog with us, also please join us at uh, youthvoices.net or middle school students at the personal learning space.com. Talk to y'all again soon. Bye now.